Hey, this is X Cult Baby back with another video. I'm super excited to do this, and today I've decided to do the story of Lot as my um, atheist Bible reading, as I've called it. As you can see, I'm in landscape mode this time, so yay! No two big black boxes this time on either side of me. I probably should have figured that the first time that I should do that. Rookie mistake, I guess. From now on, I'll do it like this, I promise. I almost decided not to do any more videos because I didn't get a whole lot of feedback on the last one. But then again, it was my first video, so, you know, like, what can I expect? But I did get some feedback from a couple of theists who maybe didn't even watch the video at all. They just saw the word atheist and they were like, Rrr. Uh, you're an atheist, you've forsaken God, and that just fuels me. So I'm gonna do another one. I'm gonna try to do a new video every single Thursday if I can. Um, and I figured I had to, I, if I was gonna do videos regularly, I had to start the exact next week because otherwise I just wouldn't do it. If you do wanna see me make new videos every Thursday, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I would really love to hear from you guys. And I would love for you to keep watching my videos if they're any good at all. Let's get into the story. So the story is about Lot, and Lot is the nephew of Abraham, who we're just going to call Abe because it's easier. And we're friends, you know, we're friends. So I'm just going to call him Abe. So Abe and Lot were originally living in the same land together, but because they had so much, like, livestock, their shepherds were getting into fights all the time. So Lot decided to move to a city called Sodom. And Abe moved to Canaan, so they just went away from each other. But they still like each other. Apparently, the city that Lot moves to is called Sodom, and it's known for being, like, grossly sinful. More on that later. So, Abe and God are just chilling and talking, and God is like, Hey, I heard there was this place is called Sodom and Gomorrah, and they're just hella sinful. So I'm gonna send some guys to check it out, and then, you know, we'll see. And Abe is like, you're not gonna, like, destroy entire cities full of people, are you? Like, cities full of, like, living people? Some of them are good, you know. Like, not all people that are there are probably bad, realistically speaking. And God's like, hell yeah, I'm gonna destroy the whole city? And Abe is like, listen, listen, listen. You can't just go destroying the whole city. What if there's even, like, 50 good people in the whole city? What then? And God's like, damn... I guess you're right. I should probably not destroy an entire city that has at least like 50 good people in it, right? Okay, if there's even 50 good people, I won't destroy the city, okay? Abe ends up negotiating him down to 10 good people because, uh, you know, Abe is a moral person, evidently, and he thinks that uh, if there's even 10 good people in a, in a city full of sinners that the whole city should not be destroyed with them in it. Because that's just, you know like morality. So obviously there's some problems here. Uh, number one being that a man had to negotiate with God to get him to make a moral decision. Because apparently in his wrath, he's just gonna whoop, destroy everybody. Everybody's gone. Good people, bad people, I don't care. It's bad enough that I heard about it. So I'm just gonna whoop, get rid of them all. Which makes you think, I mean, the fact that he changed his mind really indicates either that God was wrong in the first place or that he changed his mind to an incorrect decision. But either way, God changed his mind about something. God should not be changing his mind about things because one of those times he's wrong. That's, that's just, like, if you're an all-powerful, all-knowing being and all that, you should never be wrong, theoretically. So now God and Abe, they split up and they go out their separate ways, and God's like, yeah, I must still destroy that city, though. So he sends two angels to go and get Lot out of the city because God and Abe are like BFFs, and Lot is his nephew, so he has to watch out for his homie, you know, he's got to look out for the fam. But otherwise, like, he probably would have just gotten destroyed too. Because Lot and his family are four people. And if they're the only good people in the city, which presumably they are, since they're the only ones he's going to save, then, yeah, he, they would have just been fucked otherwise, really. 
So the two angels arrive in Sodom. And the Bible's kind of weird here because it switches back and forth between calling them men and angels, which I'm assuming uh, implies that they are angels disguised as men, so they look like men. They look like just regular dudes. Apparently really hot dudes, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So Lot sees these guys when they enter the city, and it doesn't say whether or not he realizes they're angels or not, but it does say that he immediately sees them and he's like, hey, you two come and stay at my place tonight. And they're like, nah, we'll find some place to stay in the city, it's fine. And he's like, no, 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 you gotta come and stay the night at my house. And he just keeps making it really awkward and insisting until they agree to go with them. So they go to Lot's place and their wife makes some dinner and it's all fine and good, they're just chilling. And then all of a sudden, a mob shows up out of nowhere. And the Bible is very specific about this. It says that every man in the city, from boy to old man, all of them show up in this mob, right? And they're yelling at Lot like, hey, bring those two dudes out here so we can smash. So, quick pause. Back to that original thing that I brought out. Uh, God is going to destroy this city because it's full of gross sin, right? And evidently we can gather two things from the men of the city. They are apparently all rapists, and they are apparently all into dick. And both of those things are supposedly sins in the Bible. Sexual immorality. They both fall under the category of sexual immorality. Again, we'll touch on that later. So Lot goes outside, and he's like, listen, listen, you guys. What you want to do is just, like, mind-blowingly terrible, you guys. You can't do this. In, you, you can't you can't rape these two guys. It's just, I can't let that happen. You know, they've come to stay under my roof. So instead, how about I bring my two young virgin daughters out to you and you can rape them. You can do whatever you want with them. Just don't, just don't, don't rape those guys that came to stay with me, okay? Does that sound like a good idea to anybody, huh? huh? I got a lot to say about this. First of all, Lot is acting like he has the authority, actually, to give his daughters over to these men. Like, he's just like, all right, come on, you two are going to go outside to get raped. Like, first of all, they have zero autonomy, so the Bible is making it, like, this isn't even, like, a controversial thing. It's not like anybody is disputing, well, you can't tell your daughters to come out there and they're actually going to do it. Like, everybody's just acting like he actually has the authority to do this. So clearly everybody here just shits on women. They have no autonomy. They, the daughters belong to their father. That's just how it is. And second of all, he offered his virgin daughters to a mob of rapists. Lot is fucking evil, and he clearly does not give a single shit about his daughters. It's not like these guys were even asking for a trade either. He just offered. Like, listen, don't rape these guys, but instead do this. Like, they weren't looking for a second option, they didn't ask for a second option, he just offered that second option. Like, obviously, rape is bad. Don't rape anybody. Rape is bad. But Lot doesn't think that way. He's like, raping other dudes is bad. But raping my daughters would be an improvement, at least, to raping those guys. Like, really? Because at least if they rape his daughters, it's heterosexual and not homosexual, because that would make it way, way worse, right? Heterosexual rape is obviously way better than homosexual rape, because it's not just like it's all rape or anything. It's not all terrible. So the mob is like, whoa, first of all, you're going to come in here and be all judgmental with us, bitch. Now you're going to get ass fucked way harder than those guys. We're going to fucking tear up your booty hole, okay? We're going to fuck you the fuck up. But then just then, the two angels pull Lot back into the house, and then they like cast blindness upon the whole mob. So even though they were literally breaking down the door, all of a sudden, just because they can't see, they're like, oh, I, I don't... I, I can't find the door. Like, it's one of those things that reminds me that this is just clearly a mythology. Like, I don't know how I read this and never thought that makes sense. So now the angels are like, hey, if you have any other family in the city, you need to tell them to get the fuck up out of here. Because God's destroying the city tomorrow. It's going to be burnt to a crisp. You need to get the fuck up out of here. 
the lot goes and he finds the two men that he's promised his daughters to in marriage and he tells them hey i totally almost let them get raped no just kidding he doesn't tell them that but he does tell them hey god is gonna destroy the city we need to get the fuck up out of here and they thought he was joking because that's a crazy batshit thing to say like oh god's gonna like destroy the city we need to leave right now they're like okay lot i know you're a kidder you're pulling a fast one on us all right all right lot we got you we'll get out of here mm -hmm. so lot goes back home and apparently he is not packing fast enough for these angels because they end up making basically dragging their asses out of the city the whole family lots of wife and his two daughters drag them out of the city and they're like get the fuck out of here don't look back and get to the mountains where it's safe go and lots of like god i would really prefer maybe not to live in the mountains could you like maybe let me go to this small town zoar that's right nearby and is a town and not a cave god was like damn fine i guess i won't also destroy zoar <sighs> fine i guess go to go to zoar fine so the whole family's running and it starts raining down fire and sulfur on the cities of sodom and gomorrah and then Lot, Lot's wife, who is probably just like, oh my god, my home is being destroyed, or maybe is thinking, wow, I really want to see the destruction and mayhem that's going on behind me, just, just out of curiosity. She turns around and is instantly turned into a salt pillar. I mean, that seems like a pretty minute offense for such a harsh punishment as basically death, but hey, it was probably a better death than getting, like, crushed and burned by a giant fireball from heaven. So for most Bible story books, the story of Lot ends here. It doesn't end here. There's still like a few more verses left to this chapter and they are important. I will get to those in a second. For now, let's reflect upon the morals of the story. Moral number one, don't be gay. Moral number two, don't look back upon the carnage that God is wreaking upon the world. If he decides to destroy your house, you can't even look back at it. Just, just let him do what he's going to do, okay? Second of all, do not rape men. Don't rape a man if you're a man. If it's a young virgin, it's fine, it's fine. It's mostly fine, at least. It's at least an improvement upon raping a dude. But, you know, don't... Don't rape young... Don't, don't... It's just, I mean, it's just a... It's fine. It's fine. Rape young virgins. Don't rape men. Also, convincing God not to kill indiscriminately is okay. And probably to your benefit. So the story continues like this. Lot suddenly and inexplicably gets paranoid and wants to leave Zohar and goes up to the mountains and lives in a cave and he brings his daughters with him and his daughters are like oh my god there's like no men around here for us to have kids with but you know what our dad is looking like a snack so they get him drunk until he passes out have sex with him while he is unconscious and then bear their father's children. Rape. Incest. Neither of these women, or for that matter even their children, receive divine discipline for this whole incident. Later, the Israelites and the Moabites and the Ammonites, who are the offspring of Lot's daughters, have beef with Israel. But God is like, no, 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 they're the descendants of Abraham too. You can't destroy them. Like, he protects the rape incest babies. When I was a little kid, I read those verses over and over again because I was told that everything in the Bible had purpose and meaning and a lesson to learn and something to learn about God. And the story of Lot was just so blatantly like, God is wrathful. God can be negotiated with. Uh, God allowed all of that rapey shit to happen from supposedly righteous people. And I read that over and over again, trying to figure out where the good there was. Nobody that I ever asked gave me a satisfying answer either. But 
I kind of just accepted it anyway because I didn't really have any critical thinking skills. In fact, I had critical thinking skills, but I wasn't utilizing them to the full because when I don't have religious answers for something, I just shrug and say, maybe I don't understand it, but it's certainly right. It must be. Never did I think, maybe, just maybe, this whole story is a mythology created in ancient times by people with fucked up morals who were trying to push agendas. Agendas such as treating women like property, homosexuals being worthy of death, normalizing rape and incest. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, an all-loving, all-knowing, all-powerful God would never allow any of this shit to happen, let alone endorse it by saying that the people who do these things are righteous. Anyways, that's the end of that story. Let me know in the comments if there's any other stories you want to see me cover from the Bible. Let me know if there's any other content you want to see from me. Please, please subscribe if you want to see more of this kind of content from me or see any of my other videos really. My social media and email are in the description of the video if you would like to contact me. And if you have anything else you'd like to see by me, please, please let me know. Thank you for watching. Bye.